just in case people need proof because they don't understand how I guess this world of shimming works. Um, basically, I only tighten the gearbox when I know I need to. So I tighten if I'm going to do something with the motor, check the pinion here. Um, otherwise, I know exactly how high these are and I know from feel how high there, how much of a depth there is in between here of these each of these gears. There's less than 0.1 millimeter but more than zero. I'm going to prove that right here on camera and this is from the from the shim I just did, speed shim, and I just closed it up at the very end without it on camera. I just show my thumbs up because I know everything's good. Now here is it with the Titan. Let's get up close so you can see what I'm doing. And then the bottom here, this one's a little harder to see. Let's see if I can angle it from here for the camera. Well, see if you can see it from the top. So, even without that, if you can shim, I mean, if you can spin the gears, then they're the same on, on all the sides, no matter how you shim it, I mean, how you spin it, then you know that there's a gap in between and you can see that you know barely touching it that it spins very easily I mean I'm not doing anything to, to hinder you know the ability to spin also in case you wonder why didn't I tighten the screws here on the the uh, motor I remember which way it goes it goes this way I think Nope, it goes this way. Okay, so if you hold it like this, which I was doing in the video clearly, no matter even if I tighten, that's going to be the same pressure. Exact same. There's no difference here. See, these two screws are already screwed. So I can get away with that, and it's the exact same. And just to show the beveled pinion here, you can see that there is a tiny bit of movement between the teeth. Okay, now I spin, I check again. See, look at that. Just to clearly, I gotta show a couple more times just so people understand. Okay, see right there? Now, I know the resistance of this motor by hand, so if I'm going to check between this pinion and the bevel gear, it's got to be the same. See how easy it is to spin here? And you can tell the teeth, the teeth mesh right here. Also, you can see right through here where the pinion is. I don't know how well that shows on camera right now. The motor was adjusted perfectly. I didn't have to do any adjustments in the video. I looked at it and went, whoa, okay, so I don't have to do that. So how did I do this? I just, I don't even know how this is going to go together. That's why when I fished at the end, I didn't know that the, there's no way to properly shim this because these two gears are not perfectly uh, spec to one another. Um, they're different from manufacturer, I'm sure. Uh, this is one that the person gave to me after the other one was already damaged. Who knows what he did? Maybe he had improper beveled opinion, not sure. Uh, maybe it's a crappy gear, but the thing is, is when you put it in here, there's no way you're going to shim it because you'd have to keep away from the beveled pinion here. And uh, the uh, spur gear, you'd have to add more friction to get this height uh, point right here avoided from. Clearly in the video, all I'm doing is I'm doing the best I can for a perfect shim job. Now if there's an issue between the gears, that has to be dremeled. There's nothing I can do about that until I finish shimming and say, okay, now I gotta dremel this. So that's why when I closed the gearbox, it didn't spin because of the dremeling issue that needed to be done. There's no way to shim this uh, accordingly without dremeling that area right there, which is why I did it. Now, if you still have questions why, 
how how this is still perfectly shimmed and I know it's because I've done this so many freaking times. I've done this so many, many, many times. The only thing I'm gonna do with my watt meter is move the motor up barely as much as possible. Now, in the video, I don't know how, how much you can see because I do it so quickly. It's on it's on a fast low or fast uh fast speed, so you can't really see. But I actually put uh I went up on the shims to see if I could go one more step uh, for the bevel to pinion mesh and it was too much. Um, when I spun it like this I could feel the uh, gears teeth from the pinion hitting into the uh, bevel and so I had to go backwards one step and that's what took me a little longer too. But uh, I've done faster than 14 minutes and 26 seconds however I've never you know done it on camera I just know because I just quickly do it. I've done this so many freaking times. There's there's nothing I that I could really learn from this. I mean, no matter how many people say such and such, it's all noise and everything, you don't mix the gears like I do. You don't do all the things that I do. I know what is right and what is wrong. Um, trying to disprove me is... Uh, it's like trying to disprove somebody that's done something so many times that they know what is right and what is wrong. There is no extra friction in this. I have removed all the friction from every gear axle. Um, I mean, normally, when do, when do gears in a gearbox spin the same from any angle? When do they? Because they're perfect. People need to understand that. They just don't get it. I don't know why they don't get it. I don't know why they don't get a lot of things. 